dialogue of the two sages, a contest between Nija and Ferkichna for the position of Ulf. Conor MacNessa was a legendary king of Ireland who ruled from Arwen Macha in Ulster, which is today called Navan Fort. He is described as not only being a warrior and a patron of warriors, but also a patron of scholars and poets. There are many stories attributed to MacNessa. The dialogue of the two sages tells about a controversy that arose in his court between two poets who engaged in a heated debate using the old archaic dialect of the poets. However, all but the poets themselves were dumbfounded and had no idea what either poet was saying. And, as king, Conor MacNessa sought to reform the learned professions, especially with regards to the poets. And the story goes as follows. Conor, patron of poetry and the arts, was a practical man who is said to have struck from learning the oppressive shackles of tradition that hitherto had cramped and bound it. Till his day, the learned professions, both for sake of monopoly and of effect upon the multitude, used an archaic language that only the initiated understood and that awed the mass of the people. As was normally the case, Conor MacNessa had appointed a retinue of advisers and officers comprising his court. When Adne, who was Olaf to the King of Ulster, died, his title was given to the poet Ferkitne, a man of high arts and experience. But Adne's son, Nija, who was away studying in Scotland, heard of his father's death on the waves while walking the shore. The youth went forth along the edge of the sea and poets ever believed that the brink of water was a place of revelation. And as he stood there, he heard a sound like a wailing chant of sadness, which seemed strange to him. So he cast a spell upon the water, causing it to reveal to him what was the matter. And the wave declared that the wailing he had heard was for the death of his father, Adna, whose poet's robes had been given to Ferkitna, who had taken the Olive ship, or chief poet position, in his place. Nija thus returned to Awan Maka, which was the capital of Ulster, carrying a silver branch above him. For the poets of the second order always carried a silver branch, but the Olives, or chief poets, carried a branch of gold. All the other poets bore a branch of bronze. Upon returning, he met the troublesome Brickrew, who gave Nija the Olaf ship in exchange for a valuable gift. A purple tunic with its adornment of gold and silver, and he told him to take the Olaf's seat. Then Brickrew said, No beardless boy receives the Olaf ship of Aon Maka, for Nija was still but a boy. So Nija plucked a handful of grass and cast a spell upon it so that it became like a beard upon him. Then he went and sat in the olive's chair and pulled his robe around him. Three colours were on the robe, a covering of bright bird's feathers in the middle, at the bottom a scattered speckling of Findrion, while on the top was a brilliant golden colour. Brickru then alerted Ferkitna, saying, It were sad, O Ferkitna, that thou should be put out of the olive ship today. A young, honourable man has taken the olive ship in Ewan. Enraged, Ferkitna entered MacNessa's court and was appalled to find the son of his predecessor sitting in the seat that had been specifically set aside for the olive or the Ard Philly, the chief poet, and even worse, and even worse, he was wearing the decorative bird-feathered, many-coloured mantle of the chief poet. He reprimanded the remorseless young poet, who remained indignant, seated on the chair that previously belonged to his father, Adne. The matter was referred to King Connor, who decided the wise poets should compete to air their grievance in the presence of the court and the general public. The poets would be challenged to debate one another concerning a learned controversy. The occasion of the controversy in the presence of the king 
the court and general public was a great one. But to everyone's disappointment, though the two scholars disputed long and no doubt learnedly, no one there, with the possible exception of the two poets who were arguing, was any wiser at the end than at the beginning. For they had used the obsolete language of the scholars. As a result, Connor was provoked and disgusted, and he had once ordered that the professions should not, henceforth, remain in the hereditary possession of the ancient learned families, irrespective of their rank. So, what this story is essentially showing us is that the learned professions in Ireland, whether it was the poets but also the Brehans, used a very archaic form of language. It was so archaic that it made it very difficult, if not impossible, for the ordinary people to understand what was being said. And part of the reason for this is mentioned in the story. It was to protect the professions, to guard the knowledge. And Conor MacNessa, who was a great king of Ireland, was absolutely appalled by this. And he made efforts to reform the profession so that everybody could join, that you didn't need to have the knowledge of this archaic language in order to be recognized as a high-ranking member of the professional classes. 